Suzanne may have the answer, illegal trade. So uh, <laughs> Suzanne, move it seriously, uh, an increasingly important uh, part of the world economy or concern about the world economy is growing importance of illegal trade. So why don't you give us a perspective on how you see that as fitting into the international economic environment. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Um, so the lens, the lens in which I see economic challenges might seem a little bit uh, short-sighted or a little bit narrow uh, as compared to everyone else because my career has been in law enforcement and prosecuting and investigating uh, organized crime and financial criminals. Um, but along with that has come the opportunity to work on policy issues uh, across the globe with uh, Africa, Asia, South Africa, uh, uh, South America. Um, and what, what we've learned is that our similarities in, in this area of law enforcement are greater um, than our differences and that um, really our goals are almost universal. The challenges, of course, are how to reach those goals. Um, so when I talk about the global effects of illegal trade, uh, I'm, I'm here to say that it absolutely taints every country. Um, it weaves countries together unwittingly, unwillingly, uh, in alliances that are woven by the efforts of unscrupulous criminals and organized crime groups. Um, and preys upon the weaknesses of the infrastructures and legislation. It promotes greed and corruption and ultimately affects the financial systems, reputations, and economic stability. Uh, taints the, uh, with all of the massive amounts of money uh, that are generated through illegal trade, that money has to go somewhere. It has to go into the financial system. It has to go into assets and to continue on with these organizations. Um, so some, just some basic thoughts when, I, when I'm talking about illegal uh, trade or, or trafficking um, and the impact on the economy. The, there's, a, there's little hard evidence on the totality of the scale and amounts because obviously uh, countries, uh, industries, uh, look at a specific thing that is most pressing to them at the time. Um, but just to look at some of the top revenues uh, producing illegal trades, the amounts are absolutely jaw-dropping. Um, illegal drugs, $320 billion, and we're talking a year. Uh, counterfeiting, $460 billion of, of uh, various goods. Human trafficking costs $150 billion. Wildlife trafficking, $23 billion. Timber trafficking, $10 billion. Organ trafficking, $1 billion per year. And these, these figures are, are cold cash, if you will. Um, they don't take into account the, um, the effect of, of the, the human toll um, and the reputational toll, the death uh, involved. As I said, for obvious reasons, governments uh, particularly uh, tend to focus on the thing that is most harmful uh, to them at the time in terms of trade, whether it is drugs, wildlife, nuclear trafficking, whatever, fissile materials. Um, but I don't think that you will be surprised to know that criminals aren't uh, so discreet, so discriminating. Um, and what we've seen in the world of illegal trafficking uh, is that once there's a pipeline in place, once I can get from country A to country B and the pipeline can maintain below the radar, um, I can shoot, uh, I can find a criminal group to send various uh, types of, of products. Through, through that pipeline, whether it is wildlife trafficking, whether it's humans, whether it's organ trafficking. Um, just to have the, 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 um, the pipeline in place with the various organizations. I mentioned at the outset that um, one, of the, one of the things that happens with illegal trade is that it forges partnerships between unwitting countries whether they're neighboring countries or whether they're countries 
um, quite uh, on opposite continents, on opposite sides of the world. And the links are forged by organized crime, which we could call a new global uh, enterprise. They've assessed the demand, who wants it, and they've assessed the supply, who has it. And they spend their enterprise developing how to run this below the radar of law enforcement. Um, they have a supply chain, they create new lines, they co-opt old ones, and they spread enough payoffs to the vulnerable or the greedy uh, to ensure that the organizations continue on with this large uh, billion dollar uh, payouts. Um, and as has always been the case with law enforcement, the bad guys have more money, more tools, more guns, and sometimes more influence, sadly, in one state, one country, or a region uh, to pour into the issue of illegal trade. If I've totally depressed you, <laughs> please have heart, <laughs> um, because I think there is a, there's, a, there's a basic calculus about how to move forward. And then one thing that, that I see that is, is really uh, possibly um, an, an answer. So, so the basic thing that we look to, sort of the aspirational, holistic approach, if you will, is to enhance uh, private sector engagement, to fine tune legislation, to increase the training for judges, prosecutors, investigators, to understand the drivers for the consumer demand and invest in public awareness. Um, and to the extent possible for those um, countries that find themselves in these sad, uh, unwitting partnerships to really have the conversation, to collaborate, to cooperate, and to share information as much as possible. Um, as I said, these are sort of aspirational, and they have to, you can't just do one without the others. They sort of march along together. But the one thing I will leave you with that, that I believe is the sort of coming um, uh, potential answer, but it's certainly part of the solution, is public-private partnerships. Um, when we now, we've heard sadly of, of, uh, of countries and uh, leadership gaps and um, that, uh, that ongoing problem. But what we do see um, are industries that are sort of stepping up and they're not just looking at their discrete interests. This is, this, is, this is my product, this is the thing I'm concerned about. But they are instead looking to forge relationships with the civil society, with NGOs, with governments for the, for the sort of greater good, for the, for the bigger issue. Uh, of combating trade, and I think that um, that is really um, an answer to the problem. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, one thing I'd point out, which, of which you alluded to briefly, is that illegal trade is not just a problem from the standpoint of the international trading system, but that much of this illegal trade, particularly in drugs, uh, has given rise to a real distaste in a lot of countries for existing governments that don't seem to be able to control it. If we look, whether in the Philippines or in Latin America, other parts of the world, a lot, at least some portion of the kind of populist upsurge that we've seen has been in response to the sense that the government can't control things like drug trafficking. So I think it's, it is not just a problem for the international trading system. It's a problem for the national governments of many of the countries of the world, and a very serious problem. We l l have only to look at the current campaign, presidential campaign in Brazil, to see what happens when a country starts to lose control of illegal activities within its borders. So thank you for that.